Okay. Uh, after you get a build or you set your launcher files up, you can see here you have this window. Uh, I'm not sure how clear it will come through with the resolution, but you have your patch file, uh, patch URL file, the file URL, and the hash salt. So you have the directory to find the patch file. The, the, the directory and the patch file name, the hash that you create, and then uh, the server, and then version.txt. That'll update the registry. For me, uh, for my setup, I'm actually using HP local machine. Uh, you can use local user, doesn't matter. But for me with machine, I don't get any errors when using the next step. So I'm creating in the H key local machine under software FEQ is the the key I'm creating and I'm creating an install path so we're gonna update the game using the registry so H key local machine software F uh, slash FEQ and the string we're looking for is version which is actually gonna be you know it's gonna get it from version text so then you can just use your drop down here and you can select different updating methods so obviously I'm not going to save this and build this because I removed my information here and you know I don't want to save that. So what will happen is after the build it will put it into, into your name app data roaming GLC pro build. Now I created or uh, I got an icon and I just constantly keep it in here so what I'll do is I copy the whole thing we copy it and then I put it into a folder on my desktop. For me, it's called EQ Launcher. So users not so desktop launcher. So it's on my desktop right here. Okay, <clears throat> so the next step, in order to make this an executable, which will allow users to install it wherever they want instead of being forced to put it on a certain drive, um, is you will open Eno Setup. Uh, I had quite a few tests at this. So what you can do is you can go through the wizard, which will make things easier. You can go through the, the, the scripting wizard, so you could do something like this. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to check create empty. Just hit next, enter your information in here. Uh, I'll show you what all that comes in handy. Now uh, you can keep the destination base folder, which is fine, and allow users to change application. The main executable, this is where you would select the launcher file. So you would go to browse and like I like I said, it's on my desktop. So we go desktop and where did I put it? EQ launcher and that's where you would select this. All right. So I, and then you would go to, um, well, we can just leave it like this because we're going to change it anyway. So then you go here, create shortcut, etc. You can add a license file. Informate it'll. This is a window that'll pop up before installation and after installation. You can leave them blank. It's not going to hurt anything. Admin, uh, administrative install mode for all users. That's fine. Languages. Now the output folder is where you want to put the finished product. So for me, I put it in the exact same folder. So I hit browse and put it on my on on the desktop in the EQ launcher. So I put it in the same folder. The name that you want to call it, whatever you want to call your installer to be, call it that. The icon file. Remember, I told you I copy it out and, and put it in the in the launcher. So for me, I put it in the data directory just to keep it keep it out of the root. So and then you select that. You don't need the icon file; it'll it'll use a generic one, but it looks nicer when you use a custom one. So then you would hit next, define directives, and then you finish, and you'll end up select no and you'll end up with this all right so what we're going to do is we're going to load up this instead i'm not going to save changes so you're now looking at this here so the information that you put in at the beginning this is it you know the app name version publisher url in the name of the file that it's going to uh it's going to grab now it uses all this information down in here so it'll generate this stuff up here. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff. All this is auto-generated by the, by the script. Most of all of this is as well, if I remember correctly. There were no changes I actually had to make here. 
Uh, let's see here. This is also done. Tasks are done, but the registry is what you have to add. You have to add the registry, and you have to edit the files. Everything else can stay the same. So I'm adding the HKLM, HK Local Machine, Software FEQ, just like in the um, launcher AOP a setup. And just these are default, the uninstall stuff. Uh, well, I guess not default since you have to create them yourself. So anyway, uh, I will put these in the in the description just so you can have a, a reference to go off of because you, all you need to do is change this to like um, uh, for HK user or HK current user, HKCU, I think it is. You'd, you might have to look that up. But anyway, that's what you would change there. Now for the source, this is where it's going to get the files from. So you want to make sure you have this. It says, you know, users not so desktop launcher, but you want the forward slash and the star. But that's not it. The most important is right here. These two right here at the end. You throw these at the end, it will actually do not only grab any folders and files and, and folders inside, it'll also recreate them. Otherwise, it'll throw everything in the root and it won't work. So, as you can see, this is pretty much a finished product, and I'll actually try and put this whole script in the description, and I'll just, you know, comment out, you know, block over, not block it over, but just, you know, uh, put generic terms and stuff in there, so that way you can copy and paste it into yours and put in what you need. Uh, so then after you compile it, you'll end up with an actual launcher, which as soon as I find mine, um, and the reason I can't find it is I had to change the resolution. Oh, it's right here. So you end up with, with this. And I need to go to apps and features. You actually need to uninstall it. uninstall it and then what will happen is when you double click that see it removes the icon so it'll ask you where do you want to install it so I'm just gonna say D colon fake EverQuest next the folder exists but that's because I've done it before so yes create a shortcut next install and now we have launch it should say that there's a new version available because it resets the registry to 1.0 and I'm at like 1.6 on the actual update so I will click yes for update no nope, I don't want to log now it didn't delete the actual files that were there because the only thing I uninstalled was the actual launcher itself but since there was actually a game there the game did not get uninstalled so the the game is there so all it did was check that everything was there I close it and then we launch and the screen is gigantic and there we have it the game works the launcher works patcher works now some of you might ask how did I get this fake icon here that is another program that is called Resource Hacker. So that is Resource Hacker right here. Uh, okay, I thought it was. Where'd it go? Oh, I put it way down here. There we go. So what you would do is you would select the launcher and you want to change the icon so find yourself an icon for what you want right click on the icon hit replace icon open with a new one and you select what you want and replace and there you go now I'm not going to save it because this is already uh, the original launcher so I don't want to edit it um, but yeah, once you hit replace, it's now like this. You may have to re reboot the PC to actually get it to recognize it. Sometimes, it. sometimes it'll change it right away. Sometimes it'll turn in just a little white square. 
but don't worry about it. It'll it's actually your icon. And Windows just doesn't update it correctly. But anyway, um, I'm sure there's probably more I could have explained to you, but uh, this is the quick way to turn your launcher into an executable to install it wherever they want and allow it to work. Uh, I know his instructions, you know, say put it on the C drive, use these registry entries, but this way here you can choose where you want to put it because not every user likes their stuff installed on the C drive. Uh, I'm certainly one of those. So anyway, enjoy. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.